In this video, we'll have a look at the most taxing graphics settings in The Outer Worlds 2. Like its predecessor, this game also uses the Unreal Engine 5 with all its flagship technologies including Lumen GI, Virtual Shadow Maps, and Nanite Geometry. It also allows you to switch to Hardware Accelerated Lumen which provides much higher quality lighting. We'll have a look at each of the quality presets for GI, Global Illumination, with and without hardware ray tracing, Reflections, again with and without ray tracing, and Shadows, Virtual Shadow Maps. The rest of the settings don't have a noticeable impact on performance, so we'll be leaving out of this particular guide. Before we move on to the shadow quality, here's a quick primer on how the virtual shadow quality is controlled. Virtual shadow quality is primarily altered by the shadow map ray tracing. You either alter the number of rays cast or you alter the number of samples taken per shadow ray. Reducing the ray count makes the shadow penumbra blurrier, like here. Here on the left you have a single ray, while on the right side you have five rays. So reducing the ray count makes the shadow penumbra noisier because of insufficient ray data. The other thing that's done is reducing the penumbra size, which is done by reducing the samples taken per ray. The more samples taken, the more profound, more prominent the penumbra will be. This is 8 samples per ray. This is a very prominent penumbra. Here we have 2 rays. It's less prominent than 8, but still should be sufficient for most cases. And with 0 ray samples, the penumbra completely disappears regardless of the amount of rays cast. At higher quality presets, more rays are cast for determining the shadow penumbra, resulting in softer and smoother edges, while lower quality presets reduce the penumbra, often leading to a lot of noise along the edges. The noise is especially visible in areas with limited light. Here, even high produces a fair amount of noise. This is because the shortage of light sources reduces, further reduces the amount of rays that are cast for determining the number. For artificial shadows, shadow quality has a more dramatic impact. Some shadows like these, which are particularly soft and washed out, look completely different at high and very high compared to medium and low. Low seems to use the fewest shadow rays, but uses more shadow ray samples per ray. Medium increases the ray count but reduces the number of samples taken per ray which reduces the penumbra size, the noise for that limited sized penumbra compared to low. 
high and very high, increase the rays samples taken per ray, but reduce the rays at high compared to very high, which results in a relatively blurrier shadow at high with a more smoother shadow at very high. The Global Illumination software pipeline uses screen space global illumination at low and medium while switching to lumen at high and very high. The differences between the two are rather obvious. SSGI fails to penetrate complex meshes like the dense foliage here, while Lumen is quite efficient. The top half of the foliage is lit while the area near the root is shadowed. The tree bark here is also much more clearly illuminated with lumen, rendering shadows for each curved edge and marking. SSGI is much less precise. Furthermore, SSGI produces a fair bit of noise and flickering for foliage and other related vegetation. This is worsened at low, which cuts the SSGI resolution in half. Performance wise though, low and medium perform the same, with lumen being considerably slower, cutting the performance by 15 to 25 percent. Unfortunately, the flickering also sneaks into the high-quality GI preset which uses Lumen. It's less obvious but can be seen along the tips of leaves and other vegetation. Very high is the only setting that removes all the flickering and noise, albeit costing a considerable amount of processing power. The difference between GI high and GI very high is most evident in poorly lit or indoor places. Here for example, in this crash, very high is able to penetrate the interior of the structure more th uniformly. The path is also more thoroughly lit at very high although high comes pretty close here. For interiors, however, very high stands out because it can more easily reach those hard to reach crannies and corners because of the increased ray count, trace count to be specific. In terms of shadows, however, high and very high perform the same, that is, both the Lumen presets produce the same quality shadows, almost the same quality shadows, ambient shadows, with SSGI often overshadowing and creating a less precise blanket shadow. 
Here's the difference between the 4GI presets in a relatively dark indoor environment. While very high is able to illuminate uh, the interior crevices and corners more uniformly because of its higher ray count, trace count, high does a rather decent job of illuminating most surfaces. Most of the light colored light feeding effect is also retained. Meanwhile, SSGI, which is medium and low, failed to illuminate the interiors, lacking any colored light bleeding. Instead, you get a blanket shadow over the area. Hardware ray tracing or hardware lumen not only penetrates those complex meshes like the foliage here, it also casts detailed, more fuller shadows where needed. You can also see a hint of sunlit colored light everywhere. This tree trunk is cleanly lit with detailed shadows in between the curves and the crevices. In the distance you can see that the colors are more brighter because the light is more thoroughly dispersed everywhere. These branches here are more uniformly detailed. Overall, the scene is more brighter, more vibrant, with far-reaching light that penetrates the most complex meshes, while also casting detailed shadows wherever needed. Unfortunately, those flickering artifacts are present even with hardware ray tracing and only when you switch to the very high preset do they completely disappear. At lower quality GI presets with hardware ray tracing, the game seems to skip a lot of the more convoluted textures like the grass here for the ray tracing, likely resorting to SSGI instead for them. The more larger scale scene, however, continues to be hardware ray traced, although with fewer ray counts resulting in less thorough illumination and less accurate and less intense light bleeding. interior scenes, hardware ray tracing greatly improves the illumination. The increased ray count goes miles in improving the lighting quality. Not only that, the colored light bleeding effect is much more prominent. For occluded surfaces, the shadows are also more detailed.
In terms of performance, hardware ray tracing is 5 to 8 percent slower than software ray tracing, but this can vary depending upon your hardware and the resolution used. For indoor scenes, the GI presets with hardware ray tracing mainly affect the ray count, which alters the amount of light penetrating a scene. The very high quality preset results in the most accurate illumination, revealing most surfaces with colored light bleeding while medium and high have reduced intensity. While it's still fairly effective, much more effective than software ray tracing, they're often with reduced colored light. The game uses screen space reflections at low and lumen reflections at medium, high and very high. The primary difference between medium, high and very high is the amount of light that's reflected, which results in slightly more detailed reflections with increased color detail. Higher quality reflections also result in increased light bounces, which often contributes to the global illumination by leading to a brighter, more vibrant scene. This is particularly evident at very high, which bounces off a lot more light. Hardware ray tracing has a limited impact on reflections, an area where it's most effective. It only improves the quality of off-screen reflections closest to the camera. While objects that are further off aren't reflected. It also doesn't have an observable impact on diffuse reflections, neither increasing the amount of light cast nor increasing the reflection threshold for semi-smooth surfaces. The reflection quality works the same way with hardware ray tracing as with software ray tracing. High quality presets mainly increase the amount of rays cast which results in more prominent and intense bouncing of light at higher quality presets. Meanwhile, low falls back to screen space reflections, disabling all kinds of ray traced reflections.